Great question. I've actually been a little bit surprised at the situation in that regard. I was kind of expecting that I would get more um, energetic opposition from religious, from people coming from a religious perspective. And I really only have two explanations for why that hasn't really happened. The first explanation is maybe I'm just not on their radar yet. You know, I've got this problem, as I mentioned, that people just put aging out of their minds. Maybe people who are very religious are even better than average at putting this out of their minds, so much so that they haven't really even noticed me. But of course, as time goes on, that becomes less and less plausible as an explanation. So the other explanation is that they see that actually they don't have a leg to stand on. One of the really good things about someone who talks about this or talks about anything from a religious perspective is they're not so slippery as secular argumenters often are because they've got actual written texts to start from. If something is written down in the Holy Scripture that they regard as gospel, whether it's actually the Holy Gospel in the Christian church or whether it's the Quran or whatever, um, then you've got something you can look at and say, well, okay, look, this says this, and so on. And that's what I do. When I'm asked by a Christian, for example, about the question of whether this is a good idea, I don't just try to argue that this is compatible with Holy Scripture. I argue very strongly that it's mandated by Scripture, that it would be a sin not to be doing this work. And it's very easy to make that argument. All I have to say is, listen, Aging causes suffering. It causes by far the most suffering in the world. Scripture is fairly unequivocal that our duty down here, before we get taken up to heaven, is to minimize people's suffering. So, you know, QED.